When it comes to tracking macros versus tracking calories, which one might be best for you depends on several different factors. So today I'm going to cover the pros and cons of both and let you determine when you should focus more on one or the other. Hey, this is Colin DeWay. If you want to master your metabolism and get in the best shape of your life, start now by subscribing and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. All right, there's several potential scenarios where it may make more sense to use one approach versus the other. But before I get into the specifics, I think it's important to go over what I consider to be the hierarchy of importance when it comes to fat loss. Right off the bat, the most important factor is your total energy balance, which is basically a different way of saying calories. Because when it comes to fat loss or fat storage, total calories will always trump everything. Though I could argue there's one thing that is more important, and that would be adherence and sustainability of your plan, because arguably one of the most overlooked factors is it doesn't really matter what you consider to be the best way to do things if you can't really stick to it in the long run. Anyway, the next most important thing on the list is your total macronutrient breakdown, which is your carbs, protein, and fat. So some people might look at this and say, well, see, calories are more important, so there's no need to look at your macronutrient breakdown. But hold on, that's not necessarily true, but I'm gonna get into that in a bit. After macros, the next most important thing is basically food quality or the vitamins and minerals that you get from the foods you eat. Then after that, we start getting into things like meal timing or meal frequency. And finally, last on the list is supplements. Now I want you to look at this and see how most people get this completely backwards. What do most people ask about when they start a weight loss journey? Well, first of all, they don't even think about how sustainable it might be. They just worry about how can they get the weight off as fast as possible so that they can be done. Which of course, if you're looking at just being done, there's no chance you'll ever keep the weight off, but I digress. But the first thing they do ask about is what supplements should I take? And then they start asking about things like, well, what are the exact foods I should eat? How far apart should I space my meals? Basically, they don't worry about any of the things that matter the most, sustainability, calories, and macros, and they focus all their attention on the things that by far matter the least. Now, hold on, I'm not saying that none of these things matter at all. They're just nowhere near as important as the things that are bigger on the list. And to me, it just doesn't make sense to worry about the little things unless you get the big things down first and you want to take it to the next level. Do not major in the minor. Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at some of the reasons why it may make more sense to look at macros over just calories. And then when I'm done with that, I'll go over the advantages of just calories. So yes, while calories are the most important thing, there is still a lot of value in knowing your macronutrient breakdown. For one, each macronutrient has a different thermic effect of food, which basically means this is how many calories your body burns just processing the food you eat. And this is a big part of what people are talking about when they say not all calories are created equal. Technically, 100 calories from broccoli is the same as 100 calories from ice cream because that's the amount of stored energy in the food. It's the calories your body burns processing that food that's different. And of course, foods like fruits and vegetables are gonna have a higher micronutrient density to it, which certainly has value for general overall health and how you feel. Now, when looking at different macronutrients, protein is by far the most important one. And this can be one of the bigger problems in only looking at calories because there's so much value in a higher protein diet, especially when calories are equated. Higher protein diets have consistently shown to be better for weight maintenance, and this is likely for a few reasons. One of them being the high thermic effect of food that it has, because protein has about a 25 to 30% thermic effect of food, whereas carbs is more like 5 to 8%, and fat is only 2 to 3%. Besides just that, protein is what helps build and maintain muscle mass, and the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism will be because your body will burn more calories just being you. And the third reason is more protein makes it easier to stick to lower calories because protein suppresses the hormone ghrelin, which is often called the body's hunger hormone. So more protein helps you feel fuller. And obviously if you feel fuller, it makes it less likely for you to overeat. And of course, the less you overeat, the easier it is to lose weight. Another advantage of tracking macros over just calories is it just teaches you a lot about food and nutrition. Something I frequently say is everyone wants to be able to eat intuitively, but how can you be intuitive if you have no clue what's in any of the food you eat? You need to build the knowledge base first, and then you can be intuitive. 
In fact, one thing I find pretty consistently whenever people go from not tracking or only tracking calories to switching to tracking actual macros is they're often blown away with what it actually looks like. For instance, a lot of people say that they prefer carbs over fats, but when they actually track, they find they typically get more calories from fat than they do carbs. Part of this is because there's more calories in fat. So if you didn't know, one gram of protein has four calories, one gram of carbs has four calories, and one gram of fat has nine calories. So fat calories add up pretty fast. And besides just that, a lot of the foods that people like that they think is sugar, things like donuts and things like that, they're often, yes, sugar, but it's also fat as well. Most of the time, it's a combination of the sugar and fat that people really like. So seeing this can not only be eye-opening, but it also helps you understand how nutrition works, and that lasts you for a lifetime. I honestly think that everyone should take at least two or three months and just track macros just to get that knowledge. And then, if you want to transition to something more flexible, great. Now another scenario where I think it makes more sense to look at macros over calories is especially in the later stages of a dieting phase when calories start to get pretty low. You want to make sure that you're not getting too low on any given macronutrient. And it's not because lower carb or lower fat matters that much for weight loss. In fact, most research shows that as long as calories and protein are equated, it doesn't really matter. Of course, there's always going to be some outliers, but as a whole, that seems to stand true. But when you're taking in less, it just makes it easier to end up possibly getting a little too low in one or the other and if carbs are getting too low your performance is going to suffer you're going to get low energy and you're probably just not going to feel very good and if fat gets too low you can start having negative impacts on hormones you may even notice that you start seeing some hair loss some thinning nails things like that so if you're not looking at macros and calories start getting pretty low and you're noticing some negative side effects it would be a good idea to take a look and see where things are and make sure you're not getting too low especially in fat now, as far as how low is too low, this is kind of a general statement and it's not a hard and fast rule, but I do like for the most part to make sure that women aren't getting below about 30 to 40 grams per day and men below about 40 to 50. That doesn't mean there's never an instance where it's okay. It just means if you're getting in that range, you want to start paying attention and look for negative side effects. All right, another factor to consider is who should be looking at macros over calories. See, my clientele is typically more lifestyle type of clients, and they're going to be able to get away more with only looking at calories or at least not getting too specific with macros. Whereas someone who's more of a performance athlete or a physique competitor it probably makes more sense to look at strict macros. And this is because it's a little more extreme. You're really trying to optimize performance and results, and you're placing a higher demand on the body, so it just makes sense to make sure you're optimizing things the best you can. Whereas if your goal is just to lose a little bit of weight, it really doesn't matter as much. Not that it doesn't matter at all, it's just not as important. All right, now we've looked at the advantages of macros over calories, so let's flip it around now and look at some of the advantages of just looking at calories and when that can make sense. And probably the biggest benefit of looking at only calories versus macros is that it allows for more flexibility in your diet. And remember in the beginning when I talked about it doesn't matter how optimal something is if you're not actually going to stick to it. And that's because sustainability really matters. It matters much more than people give it credit for because if you want to keep your results, this has to be a lifestyle. So if tracking strict macros is gonna make you go crazy and make you wanna give up, but just tracking calories is something that you can more realistically do, it can be a way of keeping yourself in a good place without needing quite as much rigidity in your tracking. There can even be scenarios when people who do track macros, it may make sense for them to switch for a while and only look at calories in situations where tracking macros is a little less realistic. Maybe you're going on a trip and you want to keep things in check, but allow yourself to have some more flexibility and make sure things don't get away from you. Maybe you're eating out at a restaurant and you don't really know what's in the food that's being prepared. Maybe you can just take a calorie ballpark and run with that instead, instead of falling into the trap of, well, I don't know what's in it, so who cares? And then you end up going nuts and setting yourself back. You have to understand that it's not about being perfect. And as long as you can keep yourself in the ballpark, you're not going to do any real damage. Another example can be maybe life stress is just really high like it is for most of us right now with all this craziness that's happening maybe you have less time a little less focus a little less energy and by switching to just tracking calories it will keep you in a good place instead of needing to put quite as much focus on your nutrition 
Maybe you typically track macros, but you're in the later stages of a reverse diet or you're in a building phase where carbs and fats are gonna be high no matter what. So you can take a strategy of just focusing more on calories or one strategy that I really like for a lot of people is to just give a calorie target and a protein target but you can interchange your carbs and fats however you want. Or you can take it even a step further and you just have a calorie target and you don't necessarily track protein, but you just make sure that you get a good protein source with each meal. The point is there's several situations and circumstances in life where you need to be okay with adapting and adjusting your plan. And there's plenty of options to do so without going into screw it mode. Because one of the most important things you can possibly remember is to avoid the all or nothing mentality that keeps so many people stuck. And I'm not by any means saying that you always have to track, and in fact, a good goal can be to wean yourself off tracking in the long run, but this helps to understand where tracking macros or calories might make more sense. Now, of course, there's gonna be people who will always argue and get upset when you say that food quality isn't the most important thing, and I'm not saying that it isn't important, but make sure you check out this top video where I cover some research looking at simple carbs versus complex carbs, breaking down what the research says about the differences between weight loss and health markers between the two. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.